So then there's really, I think, three main ways that this transfer happens. One is a, a direct thermal transfer, if you like heating, and we sometimes talk about the ocean and the atmosphere as being heat sinks. The ocean definitely um, thermally um, conducts heat and that can cause convection in the ocean or drive ocean currents where, same thing again, some parts of the ocean are heated more than other parts of the ocean and so you have warm bodies of water that are buoyant and cooler bodies of water that uh, tend to sink and so uh, up near the poles where the ice caps are the water there is cooler and tends to sink to the bottom of the ocean and around the equatorial region we might have that water warming and rising nearer to the surface uh, and so then we also have factored in the spinning the anticlockwise if you like this way spinning of the earth that contributes to movement of those cycles essentially the process is driven by this transfer of energy from the sun now some of sorts of things can happen with air masses in the atmosphere although the atmosphere is not quite as good at um, conducting that heat energy and often um, sometimes the energy is comes back off the surface of the earth to drive the processes for uh, th the movement of air masses but essentially what happens is similar where the cooler air masses move differently to the warmer air masses and in the process of trying to establish a sort of an equilibrium air masses move around in systematic ways also further complicated by the rotation of the planet and we see these spiral uh, air masses moving around the earth that we see as trade winds and those sorts of things uh, and then locally there are variations depending on topography and those sorts of things. The key point here is that the energy that's driving these um, transfers of heat energy and ultimately movement of different masses that are warmer or cooler comes from the sun.